Zoning Commission meeting to order April 22nd. Uh, and can we all stand for a pledge of allegiance, please? <clears throat> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Mary Scott. Absolutely. Virginia Higgins. Here. Frank Alima. He's here. All right. John Petronella. Here. Vinnie Grillo. Yep, yep. And, and Richard Suzak is here. Okay. Uh, thank you. And can I get an approval of the minutes? April 8th. Motion Second. Second. Questions, comments, or changes? Excuse me, Jen, are you having are you having audio issues? Everybody's coming in very funky here. Oh, I'm coming in real bad. Yeah, I think it's the system. I think it's the teams. Great. Well, once okay. once we get through this, let's try everybody muting, except yeah. who's talking and seems to get better. Sir. Could you repeat who 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 uh, made the motion and seconded? Linda made the motion. Any second. Thank you. Any questions, comments, and changes? Seeing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, seeing no unanimous. Uh, moving on, um, public participation. At this time, can I ask everybody to mute your mics? And let's see if that takes care of the problem. The problem's gone already. So um, is there anybody out there who would like to speak to the commission about any issues that are not currently on our agenda? If so, you can unmute your mic, state your name and address for the record, and speak up. Anyone would like to address the commission? Anyone? Okay, seeing none. Moving on, do we have any bond releases this evening? No bond releases. No bond releases, thank you, Jen. And continued public hearings, seeing none? Nope. Moving on to new public hearings. We'll start with public hearing 3001, 40 Edgewood Drive. Rich? Before we open this one, I just wanted to um, let you guys know that it has to go to wetlands first. So should so we it, not open it, Jen? I think we can table it until wetlands is, has approved it or you know made their decision on it at least. Right, the minute we open it, we have a timeline, right? Right. Right. So, um, it, and is the client um, client is the applicant okay with tabling it? Ah, uh, yes, I let her know. Okay. They're, they're uh, not here this evening, right, Jen? I don't see them. Is yeah. there anyone here? Anyone here for Forty Edgewood Drive? If so, please state your name and address for the record. I don't hear anybody, so I'll entertain a motion to table this till next meeting. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we table public hearing 3,140 Edgewood Drive till our next meeting of May. Let me see. Uh, I believe it's the 13th. Thir 13th. May 13th. Second. Motions made and seconded by Commissioner DeGray. All in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Okay, thank you. Uh, moving on, public hearing 2995, text amendment. Um, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at their next regular meeting on Thursday, April 22nd, 2000. 
and one at 7 p.m. online concerning the following application. Public hearing 2995, text amendment application to table to table 5.10 to allow bu buildings larger than 5,000 square feet in business districts and section 5.70.3 to allow child care, daycare facilities within the limited office zone. Winston Properties LLC applicant. Uh, Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Francis Alimo. He's, he's here. Yeah, he's John, here. John Petronella. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone here for the applicant? If so, state your name and address for the record, please. You're muted, sir. St still muted. Okay, now you're unmuted. Now you're muted again. Lori, do you have him muted? No, I'm I'm the host and I oh. don't have him muted. Jen's hosting. I think that the uh, maybe is there Tim, is there a way for you to turn your volume up maybe? Look under the three dots. And and it says uh, device settings. You might be able to turn up your volume through that. It says speakers. No. I do not like this platform. <laughs> um, is it, uh, Tim, possibly your computer settings as well? I would check to see if maybe your computer overall was. No. Uh, do you have any headphones plugged in or anything like that? Tim, you want to just you want to try calling in or are you were you going to share some documents? If he if he calls into one of our cell phones and we put it on speaker, wouldn't it speak for him so it goes out on uh, YouTube? And that way he can present what he was going to present. Just Tim, if you're going to call in, mute yourself on the computer. I think he's got that covered. <laughs> this isn't his first rodeo, I could tell. Well, <laughs> just relax, Tim. We'll whatever we'll work through it. Okay. I, I, he's a, he's a dirt bike guy. Issue, he's not so. a rodeo guy. <laughs> I think from now on, we need to have somebody from Menfield IT on. We have so many meetings. They couldn't possibly be all on. Do you have problems with all of them? I'm finding more and more problems. We didn't have any Can problems move. with Zoom. Well, he's now office. joining. Okay, What's he's on HD Office is what we used. Oh, right. Yeah. All right. Hear me. Yes. Now we, we can, can hear, hear you. All right. Welcome, Timothy. Well, state state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. Uh, my name is Timothy Kuhn. I'm here tonight representing Winston Properties LLC. For their request for a text amendment to the Enfield zoning regulations. Uh, Winston Properties currently has property located at 11 Field and desires to develop this facility called the Learning Experience. The property is currently zoned limited office. And unfortunately, although child daycare facilities are allowed by special permit in all other business zones, they are currently not allowed in the limited office zone. So um, this particular parcel 
uh, is located on the north side of Shaker Road, uh, just south of the Henry Bernard School. Uh, it, it's got residences to its east, uh, but then across Shaker Road, it's business and industrial zone land, which is currently occupied by the Walgreens Pharmacy and Attorney's Office. Uh, this is the Way Learning Center, which is another child daycare facility and undeveloped industrial land. Um, back in November, we did attend a preliminary ART with Lori and her staff in the planning department and other town staff to discuss what we were proposing. And after looking at the surrounding uses, um, it was suggested that we seek the text amendment. So here we are. Um, the presence of the existing school and daycare on these neighboring properties suggests that the proposed use of the subject property as a child daycare facility is appropriate for this neighborhood. Uh, and, and by requiring a special permit, the commission will maintain its ability to ensure that uh, any future application for a child in the limited office is in being with the intent of the zone to serve as a transition area between residentially zoned property and non residential zoning districts for desirable such as highways, traffic generators, business and industrial uses, and similar uses. Tim, hold on one second. Frank, can you please keep your microphone muted, Frank, because you're the one who's coming in and out and he's cutting in and out. Thank you. Did everybody get anything? Do I need to say anything again? Okay, then I'll continue. If, if you, yeah, you're sounding better now. Okay. Um, in addition to the request to add child daycare facilities as an allowable use in the limited office zone, we're also requesting an amendment to the bulk requirements to increase the maximum allowable building size in the limited office zone for larger lots. Currently, the regulation. Karen. Office Square unless the lot has more feet of front is now joining of up to 5,000 square feet or on consolidated lot. We're not getting anything. I'm not getting anything. Are you guys? No. No, he's silent. It kind of goes in and out, but he's he, gone. Well, so I was down. trying to mute somebody, but I think I muted Tim and only it's not letting me unmute him. I can't unmute him either. Why do they not allow us to unmute? <laughs> oh my God. This is just awful. It, it is what it is. We'll get through it. It's just we got to get Tim back on. So everybody, please just bear with us. And uh, Tim, can you, you're going to have to call back in. I apologize. What if you unmute everybody, Lori, and then? No, the, it's, it doesn't give us an unmute option. That's the problem, which is just insane. Tim Coon. Right. Okay, here he comes. Is now exiting. Oh. Okay, who is um, 849-9121? If you could mute yourself, if possible. I know you're on the phone, so. Oh, I, I did mute you. It's on mute. Okay, thank you. It's not muted on our screen. Try again. 
Hello. There you All go. Right. Tim Coon. All right. Uh, he All is right. now please, joining. Please start again where you started talking about the minimum square footage of the buildings, because that's where you started cutting out. All right. Thanks, so, Tim. No problem. In addition to uh, adding child as an allowable use, we're also to the bulk requirements to increase the maximum allowable building size and office zone. Currently, the regulations limit the building size to 2,000 square feet, unless the lot has more than 100 frontage, in which case it allows a building size of up to 5,000 square feet, or on a consolidated lot with more than 150 frontage, it allows a building size of up to 4,000 square feet. And what we are proposing is to add a category to allow a building size of up to 10,000 square feet for lots with more than 300 feet of frontage and an area in excess of two acres, which are for Karen. Now, the, uh, the minimum lot size and limited on is only 12,000. Is now exiting. And the minimum frontage is 75 feet. So based <laughs> on these, this parcel at 11 Shaker Road that we're looking at has sufficient area and frontage to be subdivided five separate lots. And if you applied the minimum building size thousand square feet of each of these, it would give us the ability to put up five buildings totaling 10,000 square feet in size. Thus, the proposed text change to allow a single 10,000 building on a lot of this size consistent with the current regulation, which would allow up to five 2,000 on the same parcel if we subdivided it. Thus, we, we do believe that the text change is, is consistent with the current requirements. Um, furthermore, uh, at this particular location, there is an existing 15,000 square foot Walgreens pharmacy right Finally, uh, we are requesting a text change to allow the business out of daycare facilities within the limited office zone, should it be uh, to be uh, limited to 6.30 a.m. Uh, to 6.30 p.m. Monday through Friday, rather than the 8 to 8, which is currently allowed in the limited office. For obvious reasons, the 8 just doesn't work for a child daycare facility. People need to get their kids there before they head off to work. Therefore, they, for this type of business, the, the change in hours is necessary. Um, but limited office zone is um, limited essentially to a long state highway where there's heavy traffic and a lot of traffic in the evening. So we don't believe that the early hours uh, will create any significant negative impacts to traffic or noise. So in summary, we believe that the proposed amendments um, to require or required to allow our proposed child daycare facility within the limited office zone are consistent with the intent of the zone. And we hope that you would approve these amendments this evening. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Now you need to unmute. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. And sorry <laughs> about the tech technical difficulties. Commissioners. Uh, Commissioner Suzak. Uh, um, I'm just looking at our motion that we have in our packet. And and what I would like to do is I would like to amend the motion that we have in our packet to reflect the, I guess, proposed, you know, I revision to our, you know, regulations as indicated in, you know, the, the Russo Surveyors and Engineers letter of February 24th, 2021. I think it's more accurate as to what we're trying to achieve, and it it more or less defines limitations as to where we're going and, and what we can do there. Because right now, the way we've written it, all we've said is it's got, it can be greater than 5,000 square feet. It could be 100,000 square feet. That's greater than 5,000. You know, so I think that we want to limit the, the size, and I think that you know the Russo letter is concise in terms of de defining the requirements that we're going we should be using so um I, I guess my only you know statement is that i would like to amend our motion to reflect the the, the russo 
um, request versus what it states in, in our packet. I'm OK with that. Commissioners. Jenny, I go ahead. I don't have a I don't have a hand to raise, so I apologize. You you I raised think that it. This is a good fit. Oh, I get. Okay. Yeah, your hands up. No, that that was OK. <laughs> I hate this system. Anyway, I think this is a good fit for the area. My concern or my only concern is that if we change, we, it's a special use permit, so the hours can be changed in a special use permit to reflect that particular parcel. But if we change the hours for the whole entire overlay district, you're going to have some that aren't such a good fit. In other words, you have a lot of residential homes still in the overlay district and it was created for offices like uh you know lawyers and that type of professional office daycare would be perfect where it's set at and since it would be a special use permit we could change the hours for that particular site but not the whole site that's my only concern if i could respond to that the the way that we are proposing the text amendment is to only change the hours for daycare, child daycare facilities from 6.30 to 6.30. We, the, the eight to eight would remain for the other allowable uses. Great, I didn't get that, so I apologize. Thank you. Um, my concern is we have three different things going on in this one public hearing. And, you know, daycares and size of buildings and stuff like that and they really don't have anything to do with each other lori you don't think these should be broken up into different public hearings well there it's all relative to the um limited office zone so that's that's why it's all one okay all right, any other commissioners, questions? None? Okay, Tim, anything you wanna say before I open it up to the public? Uh, no, uh, I appreciate your time and your understanding and uh, let's see what the public has to say. Beautiful, thank you. Okay, at this time, I'd like to open up public hearing 2995 for a text amendment application to table 5.10. Uh, if you would like to speak in favor or against this application, please speak up and state your name and address for the record. Going for the first time, is there anyone? Going for the second time, public hearing 2995, text amendment application. Anyone? And going for the third time. Lori, I just want to make sure everybody's not muted. I, I am not the host. You'll have to ask Jen. Or Jen, I'm sorry, Jen. Um, I see a lot of muted people. Again, I don't have the ability to unmute. Um, we don't see anybody trying to wave their hands that they want to speak. I just don't want to miss anybody. Frank, please mute. Thank you. Okay, going for the third time, public hearing 2995 for a text amendment application. Name and address for the record, please. Okay, seeing none, how would the commission like to proceed? You're muted, Rich. I, OK, there we go. I, I was clicking on the wrong button over here for some strange reason. I'll make a motion that we close public hearing um, 2995. Second. Motion's made and seconded by Commissioner DeGray. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? OK, motion carries. 
And, and Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve um, the resolution for public hearing 2995. Um, dated, you know, I, I'm going to. More or less, um, re refer to the outline of the requirements as indicated on the Russo surveyors and engineers letter dated February 24th, 2021. There's uh, three conditions that they they ind indicate. The first one is to amend footnote eight to table 5.1. The second one is to amend section 5.70.3 to allow daycares. And the third is to amend section 5.70.4 to amend the hours, allowable hours for a day daycare in an LL zone. So with, with you know, those conditions, I think that, you know, I feel that we, we can adequately define the, what the requirements that we're trying to indicate in our regulations are. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. Motions made and com uh, seconded by Commissioner DeGray. Uh, roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Four. Uh, Frank Alimo. Frank. He has his thumb up. Yeah, four. Linda DeGray. Thumbs up. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. John Petronella. Four. And Thank I believe I should be the last one. Richard Suzak is four. I lost count. <laughs> okay. All in favor, none against. Congratulations, Tim, and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you Have a great much. night. And it's right. sorry about the technical problems. <laughs> okay, moving on. Public hearing 3002, 359 Hazard Avenue. Um, uh, the Enfield, you know, Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing online at their next meeting on um, April 22nd, 2021, concerning the following application. Public hearing 3002, 395 Hazard Avenue, planned design special permit application with a site plan review to convert a currently vacant building property into a mixed use building containing business offices and residential apartments within the Hazardville Design District. 359 Hazardville, Hazard Avenue LLC, owner applicant, MAP 92, Lot 1. HV 33 Zone, Hazard Hazardville Design District Limited Office Overlay Zone. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Frank Alimo. I see him. He's here. Uh, John Petronella. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Could, okay. could you all please now mute your mics? Thank please. You. Is there anyone here for the applicant? If so, state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, good evening. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. My name is Mike Bonanno. I'm an attorney at Tavano, McCune, and Bonanno in Glastonbury, Connecticut. Uh, nice to see everybody tonight. With me this evening is the owner, Dr. Constantinos Constantino. Our architect, Arthur Hall, and new to the team is Frank Vaca, a professional engineer from BSC Group in Glastonbury. Uh, before you this evening is an application for a plan design special permit pertaining to the property at 359 Hazard Avenue. If you recall, the applicant received approval for a zone text amendment on January 14th of this year. And I'm going to turn the presentation over to Frank in a moment but I briefly want to describe the property and the proposed project. Dr. Constantino purchased the property at the end of 2018. As you're probably aware, it's a beautiful brick building located in the historic Hazardville section of town. The existing building was built around 1864 and was the location of the Hazardville Grammar School for over 100 years. It's listed as a notable resource in the 2011 Plan of Conservation and Development. 
We received special permit approval almost two years ago. It was back in May 23rd of 2019 to convert the building into a medical office. That ended up not being economically feasible. And after retaining consultants, uh, a text amendment, and with the constructive input from this commission and town staff, we came up with this new proposal, which we hope you will appreciate and, and like. Uh, the proposal is to adapt the building and reuse it for businesses in the lower level and residential apartments on the first and second floors. And I want to just point out, if approved, one of the first steps that the applicant will take is to apply for historic tax credits, which will ensure that the building will be rehabilitated and preserved in accordance with very strict standards. So we're pleased to be before you again. And with that, I'll pass the presentation on to Frank. Excellent. Thanks. Thank Mike. you, Mike. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Very good. Uh, I would like to request control because I do have a presentation. Let me see if I can share my screen here. Can everyone see my screen? Yes. I can. Yes. Very good. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Again, for the record, my name is Francis Vaca. I'm a licensed professional engineer for the BSC Group in Glastonbury, Connecticut. I'm here on behalf of Dr. Constantino. Uh, this is for 359 Hazard Avenue mixed use development, and we are here to respectfully request the approval for a plan design special permit under section 8.70 of the Hazard Bill Design District Regulations for the uh, revitalization of the uh, existing historic Enfield Grammar School. So it's located at 359 Hazard Avenue, uh, which is uh, Hazardville is located to the um, to the west of here. The property itself is located directly west of School Street, uh, fronting on Hazard Avenue State Route 190. The building itself is the upside down T that you see here. You can all see my cursor, correct? Yes. This is the frontage of the school. It is historic, as uh, Mike had indicated. Um, we are proposing the restoration of this building, and uh, today we are uh, proposing this under the plan design special permit. On this photo, I would like to identify that there is a retaining wall along the, the back and the side portions of the site. Uh, this was our ex the existing conditions that we that we prepared this plan under under was a survey that was prepared by William Palmberg. I coordinated with the town, uh, Ms. Picacia. I indicated that there has been no improvements uh, to the site since the date of this uh, survey was conducted, and we therefore use this existing survey and all of the uh, boundary A2 components associated with it for the design of the site plan. This is our erosion sedimentation control plan for construction. It is very simple because there is limited work taking place on the site. Uh, the yellow line represents uh, silt fence along the uh, western property. The red line on the bottom represents a uh, straw wattle, which is the uh, sock filled with uh, hay and or mulch uh, because it is movable if required. There is a concrete washout area for any of the proposed uh, concrete improvements, and then there is a catch basin filter sack on the one drainage basin on the property. <clears throat> These are the proposed changes associated with uh, the project. So the building itself is located here in orange. Uh, all of the gray areas that you see identified here would be replacement of uh, pavements. The gray along the western edge of the property is uh, bituminous uh, asphalt um, uh, sidewalk to maintain egress paths around the portion of the building. There is an access on the western side utilizing the existing curb cut off of uh, Hazard Ave uh, for the trash receptacle. Um, the, all of the white areas shown are existing pavements and or sidewalks that are to remain. The 
dark green hatched areas around the edges of the buildings are landscaping. Any of the light green areas are going to be lawn, and we are proposing three additional uh, street trees uh, for landscaping. There is a section of replaced sidewalk along the front of the building to allow handicap access associated with the single handicap parking space that is being uh, installed in the new graded uh, proposed bituminous area. And then there is a site sign proposed. I would like to go over in more detail the applicable regs associated with the design that we're proposing. Again, everything is in, accord is in accordance with the 8.70 design district regulations. We have ensured that all components of the project meet those specific uh, components. Minimal lot area, uh, 0.5, we are 0.6, minimum FAR for one and two bedrooms. One bedroom is six. 650 square feet. Our minimum is 661. The uh, two bedroom is 800. We are 807. Minimum lot coverage, we meet that exactly at 25%. The max density per parcel, uh, 10 dwelling units. We have 10 dwelling units. The minimum building FAR is 15%. We have 19.8% represented by our basement level. The basement level has a standard business office on the western side, on the eastern office. It is going to be a medical office space. As far as parking, uh, we are conforming to the 8.7 parking regulations with uh, two parking spaces per dwelling unit. So there's a total of 20 spaces for that. The medical office requires six spaces per 1,000 square feet. Again, we have approximately 680 square feet for the medical office. The ratio of that is four spaces. Business office uh, is uh, one space per 1,000 square feet, we have less than 1,000, we have 890 square feet, so we have one space. So in total, all of the spaces, interior spaces of the site are 25 total spaces. So we meet the requirements for parking associated with uh, off-street parking, any additional parking that may be required. Um, this, there is parking allowed on Hazard Ave, so any additional people that would come to the medical office or anything, uh, or, or the, the business office down there, uh, for for public parking, they could utilize uh, Hazardville Avenue, Hazard Bath. Uh, we also, as as part of the Section 8.0 Design District, um, you have to abide by all the limited office overlay standards for for that. So, it is the eight to eight. We are we are. Uh, coordinating with the owner. It's not going to be any more than 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. As far as uh, exterior lighting, all of the we, we are proposing a light pole uh, for safety lighting for the residents, and then there are wall pack lighting, so uh, wall lights will be located around the building. A uh, photometric plan was uh, submitted as part of the, uh, the site plan review. All of the lights on the site are dimmable so that after office hours, uh, standard business hours, they can be dimmed to a more appropriate level, uh, but still, ma still maintaining safety for the residents that live there. Uh, the site sign, uh, in accordance with the limited office district, a 12 square foot per side maximum and a five foot maximum high sign is being proposed. Uh, it's at the front, it's 10 feet off of the the uh, street line. Uh, we don't have a, f a more formal design on the sign yet, but that will get submitted at the time that the uh, sign uh, permit would be requested at the time that that moves forward. As far as landscaping, uh, we have provided additional landscaping around the building, and then we have larger areas of grass. Uh, we have added three additional street trees to meet the one tree per 50 foot requirement. And uh, we've also, by adding the, the three additional trees, we meet the minimum landscaping requirement of five trees per the number of spaces on the site, which is 25 spaces. As far as, give me one second here, I also want to, um, at the end of the review uh, performed by uh, Ms. Picacia, uh, it was passed on to all of the various departments. Um, I did have a conversation earlier this morning with uh, uh, the associate uh, engineer, the, it's, uh, the assistant engineer from the town. He did not have any comments associated with the design. He had a few minor questions on 
uh, some of the specifics of the construction details, they can get amended. I will make sure that all of his comments are addressed and put into the uh, the record set. Uh, he did review. We are we are reduce we are effectively reducing the impervious coverage on the site by approximately 0 0.4 0 0.04 acres. I'm sorry, and um, by reducing the impervious coverage, we are uh, effectively reducing the flow off the site. Therefore, that handles the stormwater management associated with the site. We are reducing portions of the impervious on the western side shown here. There's portions of an original uh, bituminous paved area where the former daycare used to play. That's getting removed and there's portions of the existing parking lot uh, along this side of the building that are also being removed. Those reductions in impervious coverage is uh, working for our stormwater management. We coordinated with the building department doing during our ART review. Uh, they did not. They had a few minor questions that uh, the architect uh, addressed at that time. Uh, they were satisfied. Water pollution control. Uh, they. We are planning to reuse the existing sanitary connections to the building. They are sufficient. Uh, he just wanted to ensure that they get uh, closed circuit televised prior to. Uh, obtaining CO for the building, so that will be in uh, ensure that that will get into the record set. The police department his only uh, the only comments from public safety was uh, the existing access to the site was a bit smaller than it was about 16 feet, so we've extended this out a bit wider to ensure that there is access both in and out of the site. I believe it's 20 foot access now. As a result of that, we have modified and we will correct the the access apron onto uh, School Street and then we will replace the sidewalk uh, throughout that area. One of engineering's comments was to ensure that the pavement and the sidewalk is in accordance with the town standards, which I will, I will, I will ensure those get into uh, the record set. I also had a conversation with a fire marshal. Um, he did not have any issues with the, with the uh, proposed design. I did indicate to him Oops, excuse me. I did indicate to him that we have added the building is not sprinklered previously, but it will be sprinklered under this design. And I have also added a fire department connection shown in this hatched area right here that is in conformance and close to that is inappropriate code distance from the existing hydrant, which is located on the street right here. That is a summary of all the uh, engineering department comments again. That's essentially uh, the design. I have more information on like the interiors of the buildings, but um, that's the, that those are the specifics associated with uh, what we are requesting. And again, uh, on behalf of the team, we are respectfully requesting the approval for this plan design special permit under Section 8.7. Uh, thank you very much. If anyone has any questions, um, feel free. I have I just have one question I noticed on C2 you're showing one handicapped space within yes. an eight foot area for loading and unloading of handicaps. But on C3 you're showing two. Your your detail is showing two pages, one for a van and one for a car. That is a that is our standard accessible parking space uh, detail. Um, it's just a standardized one. I can amend it. I can remove the section that has the 10 foot and the five foot. That's fine. I don't have a problem doing that. It's just a standard detail that we use, but I don't have any problem uh, changing that if you have a concern as far as there being no, confusion. I just, I just, for clarification, it's one handicapped spot with a loading area. That's correct. Yep. Per Connecticut Building Code, uh, there is one handicap space per 25 spaces, and we and and one of those spaces needs to be van accessible. So this is an eight foot wide by uh, well, it's 16 feet in total, with an eight foot section of striping and an eight foot section of uh, parking area. Okay. With the appropriate okay. sign. It's it's in the record now, so I think we should be good with that. Uh, Commissioner Suzak. Because I, I I just wanted sort of confirm that the, the catch basin I, I guess when I look at your 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 drawing um site drawing C 2.0 yes where, where you show the replacement on pavement it, it sort of blanks out the fact that there is a catch basin there but that catch basin is staying 
That catch basin is staying. Um, right. There is no there. Is, go ahead. And that it, all it, it's sheet flowing towards the, that catch basin. That is correct. The grading, which is hard to see on the plan. I don't know if you could see here, but the right. we, we have maintained the grading associated with the existing. So all of this is a flush condition. It's just being replaced because of deteriorated pavement and to ensure that there is adequate uh, grading associated with the handicap space. Uh, but the grades and the slopes associated with the existing pavement are being uh, retained and matched and they will grade to drain to the catch basin. The catch basin is being maintained and uh, we're going to ensure that the catch basin frame and grate are are in accordance with the standard. Because, you know, I, I, I'm just thinking that, you know, that catch basin was installed many, many, many years ago and there, there are certain standards today for catch basins and sumps and, you know, filtration and whatnot. Um, would would that catch basin need to be improved to conform with those standards or you know obviously if we're going to be doing something we should that definitely maintain a certain you know quality of water as it flows into the storm you know water system versus you know just allowing things to you know get carried in, into the system that you know via a non-conforming or or less than desirable you know i guess basin under the under the reconstruction of that parking area there would be the replacement of the parking top so the the catch basin top itself will get replaced as part of that and this in this case it would be a type cl curbless top and then the structure itself um at the time uh, could get uh, confirmed uh, usually they would get at the time that you would do that replacement, you would suck out any of the sediment in the sump, ensure that the basin is is satisfactory to be maintained. And um, if there's any deterioration at that time, that's usually when it would get replaced. But for, for the purposes of, of this project, the, the top would be replaced, but there isn't, a, there isn't anticipated need to replace the structure itself because we are not physically changing the uh, structure of the pavement associated with it. So, the, so do we do, do we know that there is a, a an adequate you know sump area or you know the depressed area you know below the outlet of that drain so that you know there is some potential for you know catching sediment and any kind of possible impurities that might be flowing in from that driveway? I did do a site inspection. Um, there is the, there was some sediment in the basin, but. Uh, I, I couldn't tell exactly the, the level of sediment. Typically what would be done at that time was you would suck out all of the sediment to see what you had as far as, um, or I should say at the time of construction, you would suck out all of the sediment to see what you would have. I do know that the uh, the building uh, roof leader drainage connects to the same basin. So there was an inlet into that. So you're getting, you're also getting any sediment they would, any roof collected sediment, but, um, it's definitely I can definitely look at, at cleaning out the, the sediment for the the uh, the sump if there would be any at that time. When I did the inspection, there was some evident, but the basin was still functioning effectively. Because is the outlet, you know, do you, do you have a diameter for that outlet in terms of the, to make sure that it has, you know, if it is collecting all the water from the site and from the roof drains, you know, during a significant, you know, a real quick downpour. You know, it could get overwhelmed if it's not adequate to, to, to get rid of that water that's flowing into it. Well, what what I do know is that we are reducing the flow that, you know, so currently it has been functioning um, that I'm aware of. Um, we are reducing the flow to it as a result of this proposed design. Um, I do not have uh, further information on uh, the basin itself. But uh, I do, I did have it reviewed by engineering, and they were satisfied with what we are proposing by reducing the impervious cover. Um, if there is additional requirements required, as of, as as far as the basin itself is concerned, uh, they can definitely be be looked at. Yeah, I just don't want to get it have you know. Obviously, the opportunity if if something needs to be improved is to do it when you're doing the reconstruction of that that paved area, so that. If, if there is something that needs to happen, it would be wise just to make it happen during that time rather than, you know, find out at a later date, oh, shoot, we should have changed that or, oh, we could have fixed that, you know, when we had everything open, but now we're stuck with what we have and, 
you know, let's not, you know, I, I just think that we, we need to sort of just investigate that so that, you know, we have adequate definition as to, you know, what it's doing and, and that it has adequate capacity. Can we propose, similar to the, the sanitary uh, analysis for the closed circuit television, can we propose as a condition of approval that the, yeah, uh, yeah, there be and, assessment? Yeah. 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 That, and that's all I'm saying is is that, you know, we don't need to see new drawings or anything. It's just that, you know, we, we shouldn't let it get lost in, in the translation because of the fact that, you know, nobody remembers what, what we discussed at, at our hearing. Understood. Um, where are you showing the reduction of water that would be hitting this storm drain? It's a standard engineering practice that you would, if you, the, so, so when you have a, when you have impervious bituminous cover on a site, when you reduce the impervious cover, so when you take your, your pavement areas and you reduce them and you replace them with planted areas or lawn areas or so on, and you clearly have more lawn than you had pavement previously, there is inherently a reduction in the peak flow off the site because more flow will will ultimately get infiltrated into the ground, infiltrated into the um, infiltrated into the uh, planted areas. So those so this area of green I, as represented. I understand I understand how it works, but where are you reducing the parking lot size? We are reducing the impervious coverage in these green areas. We are reducing bituminous that was originally located along the western side of the building. We are reducing impervious uh, bituminous coverage that was along this edge of the building. And then this entire, uh, I don't have my drawing tool here. Hold on a second. This entire, this used to be an entire uh, bituminous area here that is now being reduced down to a much smaller area for the uh, dumpster area. So in total, we are reducing. Hold on one second. I have the I have the calculation right here. The impervious coverage. The max impervious coverage on the site is uh, 0.46 acres existing. Our proposed design is 0.41 acres. So we are reducing the coverage by 0 .5, 0.05 acres which is equivalent to approximately 2,100 uh, uh, 2100 square feet of coverage. Right. Because I, I mean, I'm, on the original page, it doesn't, it's hard to make out what's existing versus what's there right now. I do see on the left side where the stockade fence is and you're putting the dumpster pad now, but that never flowed over to that drain anyways because of the grading that exists. So, it didn't flow over to the drain, but that's the, the analysis of a design is is the entire property itself. So it's the total peak flow discharge off of the site itself. Because ultimately the these this flow, if it would be sheet flowing towards the towards the um, the state system, it ultimately both both the basin and the site itself will drain to the state system. So there is a re net reduction in the amount of flow that's reaching the state system. So we are reducing the burden of flow onto the state system. Right. And that's mean, considered. Yeah, that's just, considered. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was like, that's considered an acceptable. That's a that's a satisfactory engineering um, method to reduce the peak flow from a site. Mm hmm. Yeah, because Commissioner Suzak kind of beat it. It seems like a big parking lot for one storm drain. Um, but if we're going to make it a condition of approval, I'm I'm good with that also. So, OK. Um, commissioners. I like it. I'm good with it. Can you hear me, Kim? Yep. Thank okay, you. Yeah, I'm all set. Yep. Okay, seeing um, no other commissioner comments at this time. Is there anything you would like to say before I open this up to the public? No, thank you. No. Okay. At this time, is there anybody who would like to speak in favor or against public hearing 3002, 359 Hazard Avenue? 
If so, please state your name and address for the record. Going for the first time. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is um, my name's Sharon Sonic. I'm in Southern Main Street. You have a lot of background noise. Is there any way you can step into another room? What about? That's better. Hello? Hello? Okay. Uh, is there anybody out there who would like to speak in favor against public hearing 3002? If so, state your name and address for the record, please. Jen, can you see if she is still on? Uh, was she the nine? Was she the nine one four number? Uh, I have no it's idea. Because... Well, it looks that like she's still... Yeah, that's what it looks like to me. But it looks like she's still on. But I'm not hearing anything. Okay. If she's muted, she must have muted herself. So she, I don't know if she can hear us, um, but if she can, she'll have to unmute herself on her end. Okay. Is there anybody who would like to speak in favor of public hearing 3002, 359 Hazard Avenue? If so, state your name and address for the record. Going for the first time. Going for the second time. In favor or against public hearing 30 or 3002. Going for the third time. Okay, seeing none. Um, this isn't right. This system isn't working. I mean, we got somebody who wants to speak and they can't speak I, for whatever reason. I, I completely agree. I really dislike this platform completely. This is this is totally not fair for the applicant or the people trying to speak. I mean, how many other people are trying to speak that can't speak? And, that was the only maybe, one that was listed. <laughs> I mean, as as far as the participants, I will say that's the only one that I was. <laughs> Oh, wait. I think she's back. Hi, I just, hi, I just keep getting disconnected. I'm sorry. Okay, so go I'm ahead. Gonna... State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Sharon Sattis from 7 Main Street. Okay, Sharon. Yeah, Spell hi. your last name, please. S C D I K. Okay. And what was your street? 7 Main Street. I got seven main out of that. Okay. H A Y N E S. Haynes. Seven Haynes. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Sharon. Tell us. Yeah, I'm just concerned with um, putting apartments in this area. I know we have single family homes. This uh, these apartments cause a lot of traffic, and not just traffic, but also crime and unsafe housing for these people that live there. The well-being of these people are not going to be good, but they're going to also be living in an apartment that is going to be shared with the kids. It's going to be a lot of noise. We have very limited green space in our town right now. We have 43 tenants there. Let's say there's two people per tenant. There's going to be about 100 people coming. I think to she's talking area. about the other hearing. Hazard, hazard app. The mixed use development. I think she wants 3002. Frank, please mute your microphone. Sure. Oh, not her. Oh. Oh. 
Go ahead, Sharon. Sharon. Yeah, go ahead, Sharon. Yes. I'm sorry. So I'm talking about the, the 500 hazard app. 500 hazard app. Um, over the course of their development, they've also removed about 20 trees, limiting our resources in the area already. There's a lot of wildlife in this area, turkeys, deer, in this forested area, that they already removed the resources, the trees, wetlands, everything which is getting affected already from this development. How can we trust them if they're already taking down over 20 trees? I'm lost. On this particular property? Yes, I have been um, driving by almost every day. I already seen the trees removed a couple months ago, about 20 of them. Very highly forested before. And we're talking about 42 apartments. Talking about crime. Talking about once the, if the apartments do go up, we're going to see homeless people in this area. Is she talking um, about more than there, Yeah. Are, are, I'm talking I, about um, the hazard app. Not this uh, one. Mixed use development. Right. But the one we're talking about currently is the old Hazardville School. It's on the corner of School Street and Hazard Avenue. I think you're confusing that with Blair, which is down at Skidco. Am I? Yeah, because I, that's why I ask about the trees. And I didn't mean to cut you off, so it's just I drive by this property almost every day, and I don't think there's been 20 trees on that property for 30 years. It, it's a 139 old, has or that? Yeah, it's right across no. the park. Yeah, there's um. I believe Blair. There I is a there. very forested area across the street from this area. Is it the? No, I'm talking about 612 a Hazard Ave. Has that been talked about yet? No, we're at 359 Hazard Ave. Oh, well then I'll just wait for that. Okay, I apologize. Sorry about the misunderstanding. Okay. Yeah, and that that just. Just so she knows, that is not on the agenda for this evening. Right. That is an application oh, to be you. received, correct? Right. Yep. So that'll be on possibly next meeting. So, Sharon, you do not have to wait tonight. We will not be discussing that. It'll be next meeting, possibly. Oh, thank okay. you. Okay. No problem. Is there anybody else who would like to speak in favor or against public hearing 3002, 359 Hazard Avenue? If so, state your name and address for the record. We're going to do this again. Going for the first time. Going for the second time. Public hearing 3002. And going for the third time. Okay, seeing none this time, how would the commission like to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we close public hearing 3002, 359 Avenue. Thank you. Second. And seconded by Commissioner DeGray. All in favor of closing the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Okay, how would you like to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the resolution to approve public hearing 3002, um, dated April 22nd, as prepared by the, the Planning Department with the 23 conditions listed. And I think we, we added two site-specific conditions that were not part of the original conditions. And the two conditions that we're adding, I believe, are the town and review department comments, you know, are to be incorporated into the final drawings, the, the engineering, the health department, and, and any other department that might have any kind of input. And also that the, the catch basin be reviewed for compliance with today's standards and, and requirements. Thank you. Second. Motion's made and seconded by Commissioner DeGray. Roll call. Ken Nelson. 
Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. John Petronella. Four. And Richard Suzak is four. Okay. It's unanimous. Congratulations and good luck. We look Thank forward to much. seeing that building restored. Thank you so much for everything. Yeah. Old gym. So Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Old business, seeing none. New business, seeing none. Other business, Rich, go ahead. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, and, and I, I wanted to sort of, we didn't have a, a, a town attorney's report today, but, you know, I, I noticed that there were supposed to be some discussions regarding the North Street property, the LaCory um, situation where, you know, he's utilizing the land and he was supposed to stop. I, I got a call from somebody, from a concerned citizen who said that they, they noticed that, you know, there was this truck full of some materials drive onto the site and I guess dump whatever materials they had there and then they drove off the site empty. And, and I'm just wondering, is you know I, I know the, the the last I guess town attorney's um, report that we did get was dated March 25th, and they indicated that on April 9th, 2021, was to be a, a followed up status conference. Um, and I'm just wondering if that ever happened, and and if the cease and desist order was lifted, that they they're allowed to be doing whatever they're doing there even though there's this litigation going on. Um, this is Lori, I could I could speak to that. Um, I, I don't know about the status conference, but I do know that they do have permission to come in and dump dirt and things for the farming of tobacco. So the question is, is where was, what what came in and what was dumped and where? So, um, that, I mean, we do need to have an attorney's report on this. I, I don't know what the latest status is, but I can tell you that the cease and desist has not been lifted. From, from what I understand, I don't think it was clean soil. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. But, that's, but, that's I, I, guess, but I, I, like I said, I, I can't comment that I saw it myself. It's just somebody, right. you know, who saw it and looked at it. And said, geez, you know, it, it it doesn't look like loam. It doesn't look like, you know, but you know, I can't really comment as to what they saw, but other than the fact that somebody is still using the property and and I'm not sure exactly to what extent they're using it. Yeah. Um he is still under the cease and desist order and probably should not be bringing any materials in, but We'd have to discuss that under executive session if we want right, to go. Right. I, I just that. wanted to sort of bring it up only because we didn't have a town attorney's report. Yeah, understood. Thank okay. you. Okay, can can we possibly set up an executive session with the town attorney next meeting, Lori? We certainly could try. Because I would bet that there's still work going on out of the property, and before the property is completely destroyed in the wetlands, you know. We'll discuss in an executive session. Thank you. Anything else, Rich? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, correspondence. Anyone? Um, I don't have anything other than we heard from. We had our, another POCD steering committee um, yesterday, and we discussed the survey results. Um, and we have another one next week with that is a public forum. And I want to thank the staff because I think you did a tremendous job putting together an all inclusive um, committee for the POCD. We have, you know, Scott Copens on there, Pat Tallarita. Uh, we have wetlands. We have um, the Conservation Commission. Everybody is represented there. And I just hope the public gets us involved and this is the future of Enfield. If you don't like what's going on with planning and zoning or wetlands or ZBA, uh, 
or um, you want input on what's going to happen with the mall, this is the time to do it. And all the meetings are um, through Zoom, so you can chime in. And I believe our meeting next week is um, interactive where you, where you will be able to speak. Am I correct on that, Lori? Yes, that is correct. Yeah, the public we welcome group. them to come and speak. Absolutely. And, and I, I try to take every advantage I can to promote it. Um, you know, this is your chance. If you don't like the way things are going as far as the future of Enfield, this is where you can speak up. So please join us. And uh, maybe we can put a, a, a slide up on ETV, Lori, if you could talk to Chris, maybe, and just make it more public. Yep, yep, absolutely. And uh, I, I believe I sent not just the steering committee, but I sent everybody on the PCC as well, the flyer and the agenda for next week's meeting. And if you want to pass that on to anybody that you, if you have a group setting that in Enfield, you want to pass it on to by all means. Right. One of the merrier, especially well, when we're having to do virtual. <laughs> I do have a question because sure. I got two emails. The first one you sent, and then I got a second one that says canceled. You got it um, canceled? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I got a little confused. So, yeah. I, I did too. I got one too. I actually got four emails. First one, the second two were canceled, canceled, and then a fourth one. So Lori, maybe, maybe oh, Lori that's... just send out a new one tomorrow. Sure. I, 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 don't, know what, I don't know what happened, but they are correct. And I don't know which one is good, which one isn't. I don't know. You canceled one email twice, and then you have the fourth one. So, hmm. yeah, I think, really Lori, when you, when you pulled it back, there's one email that you had for the 28th that was scheduled for the 28th, but you said the 21st. So when you pulled it back, I think it canceled the meeting. Oh, yeah, but that was I sent that a while ago. Yeah. So oh. I'll have to double check. I want to make sure that that, that the notice is correct and everything. So I I could well if I resend it tomorrow, I'll just cancel everything else. Right, and <laughs> and just make that your memo uh, or subject. You know. Yeah. Um. Thank you, because I do agree it was a little confusing. Okay. Um, I'm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Sorry about that. No, We've no. We've been doing a lot of meetings lately. It's well, I see the agenda, and and you guys have been busy, so. Um, I'd rather have you busy and we get a canceled email every now and then than nothing going yeah. on. So. so so if you yeah, I'll I'll resend it. But um, I know I sent you an email with the f agenda and the flyer and then you were probably invited through an invite. OK. So. All right. I, um, commissioner's correspondence. None. OK, uh, director of development services report. I really don't have much else. I mean, the POCD is moving forward. Um, we got the TIF amended, so we now have about a little over three hundred thousand dollars for yep. the TIF, which is awesome. Um, you know, we're just we're just trying to keep up with everything. Georgie's doing great our new assistant planner. Great. And uh, <laughs> and Rich Riches. Yeah, it, it, I guess should, should we be uh, <laughs> electing a, a representative from Planning and Zoning to be on that TIF steering committee? We did. Uh, Commissioner we did. Alima was the first one to reach out. Oh, OK, I didn't I didn't the, realize the chairman that we... appointed him. Oh, OK, yeah, I, I thought we were going to. Lori sent out an email. You right. didn't get the email? I didn't get that we appointed somebody. He, he, I, I got an email that said that, well, I got your email that says you know, if nobody else suggests anybody, I and I was ready to send out, you know, I nominate Ken Nelson. And, and, but, you know, I, you know, obviously what we want to do is we want to have somebody who's good with numbers and, you know, somebody who is good with business too. So, um, 
if if that's the choice that was made, I I wasn't aware that a choice was made in terms of you right. know I just wanted to make sure that there there was a representative and um and I believe me I did not you know I don't have a preconceived idea of who it is but you know I I just want to make sure that they're good with numbers and they're good with business. Right. Well, so. I looked at it. Commissioner Alimo ran the fire department as chief for years and years, and you know his entire career was spent in Thompsonville. So. Um, if there's somebody who has the heart and the numbers to do it, he would be the guy. Okay. All right. Thank you. Ken. You know, unless the commission has a problem with it. No. Uh, I, mean, I know. I made the email as clear as I could. If I'm the last person, I would do it. <laughs> Frank called me. Linda emailed me. So thank you both for stepping up. Because, you know, Rich has got me busy enough with the POCD. Thank you, Rich. There you go. <laughs> the, the only other thing I would say is um, we're doing our last ditch effort to get um, people to donate through um, the community gardens fundraising platform so we could get the extra money towards more garden stuff, plants and whatnot. But uh, that's about it. So if anybody wants a garden, go ahead and sign up. I have a question. Larry. Go ahead, Commissioner Alimo. Lori, do you know if we're going to go uh, in person after the 19th of May? Relative to the governor's new uh, directive? I think at this point, we're, I, I'm not sure about anything, but the, our supposition is that we will be back in person in June. Okay. Right. Thank um, you. We're, you know, it, it really depends on what the executive orders come out with. And, and you know, we're still waiting. It's like, okay, so does that mean that we can still advertise on the website? Do we have to go back to notices in the paper? There, there's a lot of other statutory things that need to be determined as well. I guess but, my question was formulated from the governor, just his press yeah. conference the other day, from what I heard yeah. him say about the 19th. Yeah, I, I think that most likely we'll be back in June. I mean, Good. we'll just start start one month fresh, you know. But until I hear from leadership, I don't know for sure. But that's that's what I'm guessing. Well, thank you for that. Mm, you're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Alimo. Uh, normally, I was okay with doing it this way when we were doing the other way, but we can't do it this way. This just doesn't work, and you know we're going to get ourselves into a lawsuit. If somebody says they tried to speak and they couldn't because we couldn't hear them or something. So um, the sooner the better. Okay. Um, administrative approval report. Look at that. Somebody's been busy. <laughs> yes. Um, so we have a bunch here. We have um, two pro, uh, proposed propane exchanges. Um, uh, one of them is at the, I believe it's called the Riverview Shops, um, that little uh, shopping center that's in the residential zone somehow. <laughs> There's a little uh, convenience store in there and associated with it, they want to do a propane exchange. And the other one is uh, with Sam's Food on Brainerd Road. Um, Rick is working with them right now to clear up any outst outstanding violations they may have before he signs off on the final permit to... Um, allow it. Um, we also have um, 14 Cranbrook, 14 Cranbrook Boulevard. Um, I believe that's the Mad Hatter, and they're putting in proposed parking lot lighting, um, pointed down and away from wetlands, of course. Um, and then we also have a proposed smoke shop to go into 11 Enfield Street. That's where the former Angie's State Line liquor store was. Um, and we have a, another medical office in 139 Hazard Avenue at the Enfield Professional Park. And a, another proposed convenience store located in Molina's Plaza at 95 High Street. I'm told that this is not in replacement of the convenience store that was there. So this is another one. Um, and then there is a proposed canopy for over the outdoor dining patio that the commission approved recently at 74 Palumba Drive associated with the new restaurant. And that's nice. all I got for you. <laughs> Any questions? Was that Anthony's restaurant? Um, I believe so. I think there's a big sign out there. 
I yep. am opening the sound. <laughs> yep, that's the one. Thank you. Yeah. He, yep. He's he's done a lot of work over there. That's a beautiful deck he's got out there. Okay, applications to be received. Yes, we have the um, we uh, Pinellas is still on there. We're still waiting for plans from them. Um, so I'll contact them. They may need to ask for an extension to open the public hearing. Um, and then we have two applications for uh, Blair Manor. They would like to change the district from residential 44 to special de development district um, in order to allow them to um, adaptively reuse the existing building and um, put in the apartments that they're looking to um, construct in there. Um, I believe there's 43 units. Um, and also there is a public hearing um, application for a proposed uh, church to go into uh, 9 North Main Street. Um, and also not on this list, we did receive Popeye's uh, special permit application for a restaurant and drive through next to Outback Steakhouse. Good. Good, good, good. All of that. Are you planning all of that next meeting, Jen? Um, I so I wasn't sure if I should put or if I should propose to put the uh, zone change and the special permit or the site plan review on for Blair Manor. I mean, it would be one and done for them in one meeting. But if the zone change gets held over or um, denied, then their site plan review can't really go forward. So, what do you guys think? I think Blair Manor is going to Wetlands on the 4th. So. Yeah, and the next meeting that should is on. be done by then. Yeah. So the next meeting for, for PZC is the 13th. I, I guess I'm not totally in favor of, of having a text change and an application both in the, on the same agenda. You know, I think that I would rather see the, the text amendment change come through so that we got an idea of, of what that text amendment change is going to be, actual verbiage of what the text amendment, not just, oh, it's going to be something like this. In terms of, you know, when I looked at the text amendment that we got today, you know, I think that, you know, it's, we have to be specific about what we're saying and, and how we're going to say it and define the parameters that we're going to be find acceptable. And and that would be difficult for us to, to digest you know everything in in one meeting, and then you know try to approve something from what what we just discussed. So, you know, I well, I think that we we should we should look at the text amendment change before we look at the application. Right. So this isn't a text amendment change that they're proposing. It's actually a zone change for the property. A zone change from uh, from R44, what is currently zoned, to a special development district zoning yeah I'm, again I'm, you know I, I i would i i just find things you know i if, if, rich i if, agree with you i agree if, with you if they're totally linked together you know we should define one and then go on to the next one jenny's shaking her head too and i i have to say um the scuttlebutt on the street and hearing what we heard tonight i do believe there's going to be people who want to speak about this and we're going to confuse them when we have two separate issues on the same. You know, I, I think, Rich, you're 100 percent. Let's deal with the zone change first. If that passes, then the next meeting or whatever meeting after that, we can deal with the site specific issue. Correct. And, and I th correct. Jenny's good. I'm good. Rich is good. Linda, Frank. Yep. OK, I'm good. Yep. I'm good. All right. Thanks, John. Yeah, so uh, all right, so that so we'll put only uh, the zone change for Blair Manor on for the next meeting. Um, if Pinellas gets their plans in, um, well, actually, either way, Pinellas has to be on for the next meeting, either to open the public hearing or to accept an extension. So okay. I have to reach out to them. Um, and then other than that, I mean, the the church is a pretty straightforward um, application. <laughs> so I don't see that taking too long. And then there's Popeyes. If you would like me to put that on for the next meeting, 
um, we can do that. Um, if you want to hold off on that, um, it's up to the commission. No, I'm good with that. I don't see anything that's going to tie us up. You guys good with it? I'm good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're good with uh, that. I was just reminding you that we also have 40 Edgewood, which shouldn't be a, a, a complicated right. application, but right. it's just another one for the agenda. So um, Popeyes is aware that they do have to bring samples in, correct? <laughs> Send them to each one of our houses. <laughs> we can make sure it's quality food here. <laughs> Wait a minute, then we need to be in chambers so they can bring yes. samples. Right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, that is good. Um, next is opportunities and unresolved issues. So, it's all yours. If the, if the commission, <laughs> what was that? Isn't that? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong thing. I thought it was the, that's the uh, the last uh, the wetlands PCC thing. Yes. I have not heard anything. Okay, so I had a conversation with the mayor and um, with everything that's going on right now, it's just, it's not, not the right time to even open this can of worms. So if the commission's okay with it, I'm okay with it. We remove it from the agenda. We can always revisit it at a later date when things kind of calm down a little. COVID kind of threw a wrench in everything. So if you guys are okay with that, I'll entertain a motion to remove it from the agenda. So moved. And second. a second. Motion's second. made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Seeing none, it's unanimous. Okay. And I just want to say to everybody watching right now, we are short members on wetlands and planning and zoning. If you want to get involved, please contact the town manager's office and put an application in. Any experience you have in regards to any of these issues would be greatly appreciated. And this is how you give back to the community or help make the changes you feel the community needs. Um, that's it. Anybody have anything else? Rich? I was going to say, Linda normally says what else needs to be said. Oh, I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Second. Linda's, Linda's sleeping over there. What's going She's on? Sleeping. I know. It's like, wait, wait, wait. wait. I don't it's been a long day. <laughs> really long day. Well, I, looked at only Rich and I looked at Rich. And you, he was like, kind of like something. And I'm like, is it about the wetlands issue? And then, hello, Linda. Let's go, Linda. Okay. <laughs> all, right. all right. I fell down to my job. <laughs> uh, all in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Thank you, everyone. And hopefully I see you all next week at the POCD meeting. Even if you're not a commissioner or on the committee, remember, it's open to the public. And please join us. Uh, your opinions are very much welcome. Right. Have a great night. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.